Hello and welcome to Punto How To. My name's Andy and this is my 2011 Fiat Punto Evo. On this channel I make videos about things largely Punto related and very occasionally these videos may prove to be useful to you. In this video today I'm going to be showing you how to remove this panel from the inside of the driver's door. But before I do that, don't forget to click subscribe, also click that bell notification icon so that you get notifications when I upload new videos. When I first got this car, there was a large piece of black tape just hiding behind the door panel. You can see it just here, right up against the uh, hinges of the door. And I've always been intrigued to find out what this tape was actually there for. I have a fair idea, it's probably nothing very interesting, but it gives me a good excuse to remove this door panel to take a look. I've never removed one of these door panels, so it's going to be interesting to find out how it comes off. On examination I find there are two screws on the edge of the door panel, here and here. These are not going to be a problem to remove, they just appear to be a simple Phillips or crosshead screwdriver. I noted in the bottom of the door handle there is a little plastic cover which is obviously removed to take a screw out, and another one in the back of the door handle again removed to take a screw out. So I kick things off by removing the two Phillips screws from the end of the door panel, as you can see here. This doesn't take too long at all and is a very simple job. I've got a little magnetic um, components tray that I'm putting all the screws and fittings in so I don't lose anything. Next up is to remove those little screw covers from the inside of the door pull and from the inside of the door handle. These pop out of the way with just a flat bladed screwdriver. And Fiat have very kindly moulded these so that you don't really damage them when you lever them out. Hidden behind the cap on the door handle is a little 5mm Allen bolt and we've got the suitable 5mm wrench to use to undo that. This one doesn't reach easily, so we're going to use the back end so we get the full length of it and then just turn it by hand to crack that open. In the door handle pull, we're going to use this T40 Torx bit um, wrench and it just is a simple case of unscrewing the Torx bit bolt that is in the bottom of the recess of the door pull. Collecting all those fastenings in my little magnetic tray as I go. Once you've removed that bolt from the bottom of the door pull, you can pull the entire trim up with all the electric window and electric wing mirror switches still in place, and then it's a simple case of unplugging the wiring plugs. Behind the door pull trim we find a couple of torque bolts, and it is just a simple case with that T40 torque wrench um, to undo those. Next up, almost all door panels on cars work like this and you'll need to lever the bottom of the panel away from the door and then with a little bit of brute force pull um, hard to release the little pop fittings that fit on the back of the door panel and secure it to the metalwork of the door. Um, the noise you heard was actually coins falling to the ground that had somehow got behind the door panel, I'm not quite sure how they had. But then what you need to do is, once you've lifted it up, is then lift the door card upwards and peel it away um, along the bottom part of the window as this hooks into the bottom of the window. Be very careful when doing this, because there are still some electrical connections on the back of the door panel for the speakers and for the, um, the actual door handle and how that functions, as well as another little electrical connection on mine for a little LED lamp that lights up the door handle when the rest of the lights on the car are turned on. As you can see I was wrestling a bit with the door panel here so I wasn't able to take the camera and show you what was going on but if you keep watching when I put it all back together I'll show you how the electrical connections plug in and also how to disconnect the door pull mechanism from the back of the door handle. And success! The door panel is off! Now we can see we've got tape across the middle of the door, we've got tape along the top edge of the door as well and that original tape along the side. Um, I started to have a look and sort of started trying to pull it back, but as I did, I found that the um, membrane, this white area, or white plastic, is a, is a waterproof membrane to stop water getting into the cabin of the car. Um, I found that that tape wasn't really doing anything, and rather than rip the waterproof membrane trying to remove it, I just tucked the edge under and left it where it was. I took a little look at this patch of tape in the middle of the door. Again, it wasn't particularly clear why it was there. There was obviously a large gash in the waterproof membrane, but this car has its original windows from the factory, so it hasn't had a broken window or anything at any point. 
It has the original speaker in place, still held in place with the appropriate rivets. There's nothing in the bottom of the door. It was a bit of a mystery as to why this tape was here. So if you've got an idea of why the tape was there, please let me know in the comments because I am completely at a loss with this one. Here is close up of the door speaker. This is the uprated speaker for a Fiat, but it's still a fairly cheap model. There are three pot rivets, one at the top and two on either side at the bottom. There is also an electrical connector on the top, which I couldn't get to disconnect, which was interesting. As I'm not replacing this, I left it alone, but if you wanted to change it, you would need to drill out the rivets. So on the back of the door panel, you have this is the back of the door handle and the wire from the door handle mechanism clips into this little clip here. And then the white plastic circle here that just pushes down into this clip here and that secures everything in place. And then before you move on to other things, be sure to give the whole mechanism a test just to make sure that the door handle is going to work once you've put it back together. There is then an electrical connector to plug in um, just above the door handle for the door handle light and that goes in this little socket here. There is also, um, you can see just in the front of the shot, a little plastic push connector which just pushes into the hole in the back of the door panel here that just secures the wiring in place. I couldn't actually see what I was doing which is why um, I'm just moving around and hoping for the best. The final thing is then to attach the tweeter speaker to the back of the door panel which goes in front of the door handle and there's three little clips that just secure that in place um, which I'm trying to show here. Once that's pushed in, you can then put the door panel back on the car. To put the door panel back on the car, you will need to lift it up above the edge of the bottom of the window line and hook it over the bottom of the window area. And then you will need to push the whole door panel down so it clips in at the bottom of the window. Once you've done that, you can pull your wiring loom out and get ready to reconnect your wiring connectors. Obviously making sure that everything is lined up because the last thing you want to do is try and put the clips, the little push clips back in place if the door panel is not lined up. Um, you can very easily damage the clips doing that. Once you've got it back in place, it is just a case of with the sort of palm of your hand or um, a fist is just tapping the door panel back into place to make sure all those little pop fittings pop back in. Once you're happy that the door panel is all in place, the next thing to do is to take the little T40 screws that secure the middle of the door panel to the metalwork of the door itself and pop them back in. Obviously you need to access them through the hole that is made by removing the trim for the electric windows and the electric mirrors. I did this in a bit of a strange order but you can reconnect your electrical connections for the electric windows and for the electric wing mirrors to the back of the little door pull panel as I'm doing here. You can now put the controls for the electric windows and mirrors as well as the little door pull back in place and that just clips in as you heard there with a nice click and then another T40 screw in the bottom of that door handle secure that in place. Once that is tightened down and secured you can go ahead and put the little plastic cap back in to um, help cover that screw up and make it all look a bit nicer. Don't forget to put that little 5mm Allen headed bolt back into the um, back of the door handle recess. Again, just tighten that up and then once you're happy that it's done up tight enough, you can put the little plastic trim in to finish that off. So again, it all looks nice. Um, it's important not to lose these trims or break them because otherwise you're going to have exposed bolts and they're going to look pretty terrible. And the final little job to do is just to put those two little Phillips headed screws back in the edge of the door as I'm showing you here. One at the top, one at the bottom. One final thing to do before you put your tools away is just check the electrical connections are all working. So test your electric window up and down. Also make sure that the electric mirror is working um, in all directions. So up, down, left and right. The last thing you want to do is have everything put back together, put your tools away, and then the next time you go to use the car you find something isn't working. That's fine, everything is working there. We're going to call this job done.
And that is how you remove and refit the driver side punto door panel. The passenger side is very much the same. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have, please let me know in the comment section below or by giving me a thumbs up. Also, if you have got any questions, pop them in the comment section below. I always try and reply to all comments and questions left on my videos and would just like to say thank you to all subscribers who have clicked that subscribe button. My name's Andy and I will see you in the next video. Take care. If you are still here, why are you still here? But if you are still here on your screen now, you should find some links to some other videos that you might find interesting. And also, if you haven't done so, that big subscribe button is there ready for you to hit.